Hi, this is Jeff Colley, Director of Unitech Career Center, and I'm here today with a special guest, Jason McKay from SISM Ford. And Jason is not only, um, and I'll let him explain his role at, at SISM Ford here in just a second, but he's also a great supporter, as is uh, the entire SISM family to Unitech Career Center. And um, he's also a board member on our foundation board for the Unitech Educational Foundation. We're going to talk about that here in just a few minutes. But uh, Jason, I'll kind of let you tell us what your role is at SISM and how long you've been with the company. And give us a little background, a little history on the company if you would. Sure. Um, Sam SISM Motors was actually started by Sam SISM himself in 1937. Um, very small company, started small, has grown to be rather large. Uh, trying to get involved in the community as much as possible. We understand that our future is our employees. So. Um, participating as much as we can with the various organizations and groups trying to recruit from the community um, for employees, technicians, and really overall all dealership employees. Now you have, um, or you had earlier this year, I don't know if you still have this young man there, but you were one of the first people that we reached out to as far as a registered youth apprenticeship. Mr. Marler uh, was working with you and you, you had a young man that you placed um, at your facility and I know you and I had a conversation where you said that, that the, the young man was uh, progressing in, in his position, the things that he was yeah, doing sure. there, and uh, was able to, to, to reach some different uh, uh, milestones that he wanted to accomplish, and you guys have rewarded him uh, you know, with, with uh, increases in pay. And, and at the same time, you were kind of explaining to him, because he's still just a young man, yeah. that you know, I think you said he came in one day and said, hey, when am I going to get this raise? And you said, well, we earn raises here, and right. this is how yeah. you do it. But um, I know that you guys have been a big supporter of that youth apprenticeship program and, and you've benefited from having some, some quality people over there. Um, what, what is your role right now, Jason, at, at SISM Ford? Well, my main role is in the fixed operations side of things. Um, primarily focus on service, um, you know, as far as, you know, hiring, retaining, training, um, customer relations, things like that. So um, just, just trying to grow the business get the quality people in there so we can serve the community better. And how long have you been with, with SISM now? I've been there eight years. Eight years. Eight years. And were you in the car business previously? Yeah, I have uh, 30 years car business experience. Started out as a auto tech myself, went through Ford's asset program, which is basically their, their apprentice training program. So started at the bottom and have uh, worked my way up through the ranks. So for someone that's not familiar with the way a new car dealership works, and I don't mean to put you on the spot here, but most people, they know two aspects of it. They know the purchasing aspect and they know the service aspect. Um, very seldom do they call to order parts. That's a lot of times done by the service. Um, they, they just know that when they make a, a purchase agreement, um, the, the finance and insurance portion, some of them are familiar with. Could you tell us what type of, of um, programs that you have there at SISM? Walk us through what you might have, uh, say if someone walked in the door and wanted to buy a new Ford today, um, what would be the, the procedure for them? Well, the, the main procedure is figuring out, obviously in this market, new cars are limited, used cars are even limited as well. So our process is to get them with a salesperson, sit down, find out what their needs and wants are. And then hopefully we can get them exactly what they're looking for, either today or in the very near future. If we can't, then we can start making compromises on maybe color or certain features. If you want an Explorer, but you wanted red and you wanted heated seats, well, we may not be able to do that today. We can obviously order anything you want for you. But um, we might be able to say, well, if you can sacrifice the heated seats, you can get the red one mm -hmm. and we'll have that in stock. So we used to have a lot more flexibility with larger inventories, but now we have to kind of make some concessions here and there to still get someone in a vehicle that they're happy with and it's going to work well for their family. You joked the other day, you were, but I think you were being serious. You said that one of your salesmen was excited because he looked out on the lot and he had three explorers. Yes, you and bet. you said two years ago, you'd look out and there'd be 33 explorers oh, out yeah, there. Yeah, and but, but now you're starting to get some inventory back. Yes. Um, I, I drove by the other day, saw you had a couple of the new body style Broncos out there, which yep. are hard to find. Um, on a turnaround, if, you, if someone walked in and ordered, say, hey, I, I don't want the blue Bronco, I want the red one. If you had to order one, what kind of turnaround time are you looking at now on those orders? I'm not exactly sure on that. I can't commit to that. It's very model specific. Certain vehicles are coming in more readily 
um, available. Other ones are taking a long time. So I've heard, I've heard you know longer waits on especially like the, mm -hmm. the larger Broncos and things right. like that. But if it's a small Bronco sport, then I think it's a reasonable timeline depending on how it's spec'd out. Sure, sure. Yeah, and like I said, the, you know the availability you, you touched on earlier, the used car market now they're bringing more money than they've ever brought before. So while you, you're looking, if you're a new car buyer, we talked about this off camera, if you're a new car buyer, um, you're looking thinking, well, I might have to pay a little bit more. You're also going to get so much more for your trade than you might have ever received. Sure. So it's a great time if you're wanting to trade a vehicle in because you guys are, are actively seeking uh, quality used cars, cars on your lot. You bet. And you can't be afraid of the the rumors or scuttle going around that new cars are more expensive or priced maybe in some cases um, above market because the used car market has followed it as well. So um, this, your trade is going to be worth more than it would have been a year ago or two years ago. One of the things I was talking to a guy in, in the car business and one of the things he told me was that if there was one good thing that COVID brought to um, retail sales, it was the fact that it forced some folks to do more market research. And you mentioned when a, when a person comes into your store, you want to place them with the right salesperson. Um, and so did you see that with COVID? Did you see your salespeople and even your service people had that opportunity? Because you guys tried to keep everybody on and work them as sure. much as possible. Did they get that opportunity to really learn more about their product? Yeah, I think so, because there was a lot more downtime. Um, foot traffic was down, so there's more time to focus on training and just research. You know, Ford comes out with new model training every year. We try to stay on top of it as much as possible, but sometimes it does get maybe a month behind, and there's some, a product out there that we're not familiar with. So everyone was able to get kind of caught up, reset, and uh, hopefully uh, use that to better serve the community. Okay. I want to talk a little bit um, about the Unitech Educational Foundation. Um, I first met Jason when uh, he and I both serve on the uh, Industry and Education Partnership um, that uh, was, was set up by several of the companies in the area, U.S. Tool being kind of a driving force in that. Um, when we talked about forming the Unitech Educational Foundation, uh, Jason was one of the first folks that uh, he, along with David Sism and family, reached out and said, we want to be a part of this. Um, what we're doing currently at Unitech is we've, we've realized that there is a need for some expansion. Uh, we need a, a, about an 8,000 to 10,000 square foot annex building that we're planning on, on building here in the coming uh, year. And um, we needed a foundation to raise and match some funds from a grant that I had written. Uh, and we did receive this grant. And um, so I'll let you talk a little bit about what you got, because it's, it's one thing to say, my, my good friend Brian McNamara, who's our attorney in, on the foundation, and, and Brian always has a great line. He said, you know, if you ask people for money, they'll offer you all kinds of advice. And if you ask them for advice or help, they'll just offer yeah. you money. Yeah. So when you can get those people that say, hey, we want to we be a partner in this, not just to lend advice, but to lend uh, financial support and um, continued um, advice and what we need with our employees moving forward. Um, you guys had a great idea for a fundraiser uh, that, would, that would benefit us um, with our foundation, would benefit several programs here at Unitech. And the idea behind this expansion was so that we could expand um, our construction and our uh, welding, which are really two sought after programs. But by building this built this larger building, what that also does is it creates those other spaces that some of those programs, we're going to move some of those programs around. So in some cases, we're going to double the size that, that some programs had. So I'll let you talk a little bit about what you guys decided to do. And it was a great idea for the, for the fundraiser, for the Unitech Foundation. Um, what we're doing is for the month of April, we've pledged a $100 donation for every new and used vehicle sold. And uh, that's across the board. And... You know, hopefully, you know, we obviously we were hoping for a big number and uh, we're a little bit into the month. Things are going along pretty well. So um, we just decided it was a good way to versus just to pledge a certain dollar amount to basically not have a cap on it to where we can we can put this money toward car purchases. You know, heck, maybe it may skew someone into buying from us when they were considering buying somewhere else. Maybe their grandson or their son goes to Unitech and they right. see the promotion and they're in the market for a car and they weren't considering us and and hopefully this will kind of have them come take a look and see what we have to offer. Yeah, like I said, we talked about your selection. It's already growing. Yeah. You, you, it seems like every 
Uh, I know you, Ford releases stuff, what, a couple times a month, you guys will get some allotments? Yeah, it's just, you know, the trucks come in, you know, sometimes the vehicles are built and it takes a little while to get there. Same thing, transportation drivers, everyone's a little short on employees right now. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have customers sometimes, they'll get notified that their vehicle's built and they're like, where is it? And we're like, it's coming. Yeah, we, we promise you're going to get it. You'll be the second person to know. So. Funny story, we were walking down here for the interview and, and, Jason told me yesterday, he said, uh, I'm going to try to bring David Sism with me um, if, he, if he's not busy. And I said, so, so David was busy and couldn't make it. And he said, well, he said he was, he was going to come right up until the final hour. And he said, I stuck my head in and he was in the process of closing a deal on a car. And I said, don't bother him. <laughs> be sure that he gets that deal closed because that's another $100 sure, that's going to be yeah. pledged to Unitech. So if David or anyone over there is busy, um, uh, you know, closing a deal. Let be sure and let them close that deal. And maybe we'll get lucky, and it was two cars. I don't yeah, know. You, you, know, you never I know. know. Um, but you know, you mentioned was it 1937? Sism's yeah. been around since 1937, and uh, has always been involved not just with with Unitech, but with just a great supporter of the community sure. in general. Yeah. And um, for the last, would you say seven or eight years, you've you've been with I've the been company. Eight years, yes. And. Um, so we really appreciate, uh, you know, SISM Ford stepping up and, and helping out with our foundation. If you'd like to support the Unitech Educational Foundation, be sure and check out our website. Or you can go to, we have a GoFundMe account set up. And, or you can just come in here to Unitech, visit with us anytime. We're always happy to take someone around on a tour. Jason, I gave you a tour a couple weeks yeah. ago, and he said, I didn't realize that all this stuff was here. Right. Very excited about it. Um, we're happy to, to show anyone around just about any time. We, we'll make time to, to show someone around. Uh, if you want to mail a check, it is to Unitech Foundation at 7163 Raider Road, Bonterre, Missouri, 63628. Until next time, thanks All so right. much for coming Thank in, you. Jason. We, we appreciate, appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate having yeah. you guys. Thank you.